Dear students, in this unit we will talk about phylum Annelida. Now the term Annelida, that means ringed. It refers to a series of rings or segments that make up the whole body of this annelid organism. Now this phylum is composed of about 15,000 species. Now member of this phylum, they are also called as segmented worms. They have bilateral symmetry and they have a tubular body that may be partitioned into more than 100 different segments. As you can see here that this typical annelid body composed of different segments. So these segments, it could be more than 100 segments. They make up the body of this organism of phylum Annelida. Now, both the body wall and many of the internal organs are segmented, but some of them, they just like the digestive tract and certain nerves, they extend the entire length of the body passing through these successive segments. Other structures such as excretory organs, they are present in each of these hundred segments. Now, when we talk about their body, they are tiproblastic organisms, which means their body is composed of three layers and they are bilaterally symmetrical. Bilaterally symmetrical means that the right side of their body is exactly just like the left side of the body. Now their true coelomate means they possess a true body cavity and they are metamerically segmented with a thin flexible cuticle which is present around their body. Now their size it could be as small as one millimeter in length and as large as three meters. When we talk about the classes of this phylum, there are three main classes. One is polychaetes. These are marine and freshwater worms, and they have uh, different segments, and each segment bears a pair of parapodia. Parapodia, this is, you can see, these are the parapodias, and these parapodias have many CT or hair-like structures which you can see here. These are the hair-like structures and they are present on each segment. And they have well-developed head and their sexes are normally separate which means that male and female organisms are present separately. Uh, when we talk about the other class which is called earthworms, they are terrestrial and freshwater worms and they have uh, less CT per segment as compared to the polychaetes and they also lack well-developed head and they don't have separate sexes, they are hermaphrodites which means that same organism can produce male as well as female gametes which through sexual reproduction can unite to give rise a new organism. Now, when we talk about another class of uh, this phylum Annelida, leeches, they are mostly freshwater blood-sucking parasites and their appendages and CT, they are present, absent actually. They don't have CTs and they are very prominent muscular suckers uh, which are present in the freshwater. Now, they are mostly aquatic, uh, marine or freshwater while some of the organism of this phylum, they are terrestrial, they burrow inside the soil, the soft soil, and they are sedentary or free living life they usually possess, and they could be commensals as well as parasitic. I mean, they, most of the organisms, they live as free living organisms, while some of them, they live as parasites. Now, when we talk about the process of respiration, respiration, uh, because their skin is moist, so respiration normally occurs through that moist skins, or they could have gills of parapodia, and they could respire through those gills as well. Now, 
the blood circulatory system, they also have a closed blood circulatory system. When we talk about the uh, brain or the cerebral ganglion of this uh, phylum annelids organisms, it usually originates uh, from the head and usually it stays in the head. Now, when we talk about the uh, mode of uh, uh, sexual reproduction, they are hermaphroditic or they could have uh, uh, separate sexes as male, as female organisms. And they could also be dioecious or unisexual form. They could also be present in those unisexual form as well. Uh, now, when we talk about the uh, organisms of uh, this phylum, the earthworms are the most famous one. They are present in the damp soils and they help in the increase of the fertility of the soil.